How we doing, guys? We are back at it again. Um, last time I filmed was on a Saturday night. I think I finished filming around 10.30. It is now a Tuesday night. Uh, it's around 8.30 at night. And um, I figure we'll do a little bit more right now and um, see how far we get. So this afternoon, what I did is I, uh, I cleaned up my studs and I cleaned up the bolts that go uh, in the air horn there. Um, got all the, the junk off of there and they are looking uh, significantly better. And um, what I used was uh, this little guy right here. And this, um, this was a gift from my parents to me in like the late 80s. Uh, the reason I wanted this back in the 80s was to sharpen lawnmower blades when I had like a 21 inch push mower and I was, I was mowing lawns. And I quickly learned that this is not, you know, the best tool for sharpening blades. So I would use it occasionally and I think for about 20 years it's been sitting in my basement. Um, about three months ago, I, I dug it up and I got a five inch brass wheel and I got a five inch steel wheel. And I gotta say that this brass wheel is amazing, amazing for cleaning nuts and bolts. Um, I, I have this dream of buying an eight inch really manly uh, grinder with a two inch sanding, um, not a disc, but a, a sanding unit on this side and a, a brass wheel on this side. But I gotta say, I, I can't really justify upgrading this thing because as long as you can get the, the nut or bolt, you know, into the brass, um, it cleans it up real nice and real fast. Uh, and, and the other interesting thing I wanna point out is this is Delta from the late 80s. And it says right on the thing, the label here, manufactured in Taiwan for Delta International Machinery Corp, uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So I, you know, I always thought Delta was good American made stuff back in the day, but I mean, has Delta always been, you know, um, the Makita from back in the day, you know, the same idea, just reasonably priced tools. Maybe, maybe that's what I'm missing. But, um, you know, guys, before you go buying some crazy giant grinder, um, you know, maybe a garage sale grinder with a nice brass brush is gonna do a great job cleaning nuts and bolts. I can't tell you why. Um, the brass is softer than the steel, but for cleaning stuff off, any metallic thing, whether it be an ax or a bolt, I love these brass brushes. Um, really does an amazing job. So the other thing I did today is I did go ahead and um, cut down my 10 by 1.5 bolts. I bought a couple bolts to put in the hole here and I just wanna show you, uh, let, me, let me zoom in and I'll show you something. So the first thing I wanna show you is, is just this tag here that basically says, move your cap plugs from your old pump to your new pump. And that was on the last pump as well. And I swear, this is the last I'm gonna bring this up after, after this, uh, this next piece. Um, so I ordered from Jags, um, I ordered this kit right here, which is a stud and bolt kit for GM power steering pumps. And I assume this is for really old cars. Um, but what I learned, you know, it said in the description that these are 3 8 by 16 SAE. And I've since learned that the studs on this pump are 10 by 1.5 metric. But I just wanna show you how close these threads are. Um, so this is the 3 8 by 16, and I'm gonna leave it a little loose, and look how much, look at how loose that is, how much it's moving. But I mean, if you ten tighten that down all the way, you know, I, I, I think that that might actually, might actually have worked. But this is, uh, this is the 10 by 1.5 metric. And on these guys, I, I did have to cut them a little bit shorter. But let me put this guy in a little bit. Uh, 
So there's a little bit of airspace back there too, but you see how, you know, yeah, the threads move a little bit, but not nearly as much as the 3 8 by 16. Uh, and this is definitely not the first time that SAE threads that were very close to metric, you know, got me or almost got me. I was doing the uh, shocks in the front of my truck, uh, my Dodge, and there's, there's a ring with three studs on it. And I thought it was a, an SAE. I was like, it's a Dodge, it's from 2002, it must be SAE. So I used an SAE nut because I broke one of them or one of them was, you know, really rusty. So I put a, an SAE stud on that, that fit perfectly fine. But once I cranked down on it, I, I couldn't get the damn thing off. It like locked on. Uh, so, so when I tried to get the stud off, I actually broke it off from what was below. Uh, and it was quite an ordeal to get that fixed. Um, so I, I guess the moral of the story is if you, you know, you never assume a, a stud, whether it's metric or SAE, and um, just be careful. And, and I really don't know how you can tell the difference in the end because some of these threads are so similar. Uh, let me get something to pop this plug off. And again, I'm sure you guys know, but you know, never force threads. If, if something's not threading nicely, back it off and try again. Never force them. That's always a recipe for disaster. So if it's a metric thread, it must be a metric bolt, right? And anybody new to uh, torque wrenches, uh, with click type torque wrenches like this, you are not supposed to leave the torque on. It, it distorts the, the spring in there or whatever makes it torque. So as soon as you're done with it, uh, take, the, uh, take the torque off. Although I should have left that on for a few minutes while we do the other stuff. So there we go, we got our studs on, uh, nice stainless ones. I think we're gonna be okay now. So the next thing the directions want us to do, and I've already done it, but is to go through, and if there's any paint on this shaft right here, to go ahead and clean it off. Um, so I used, um, I used this stuff, which I really couldn't tell you what it is. It's like a sandpaper. I believe it's what plumbers use to, um, I just went like that. It's what plumbers use to clean copper pipe. And I was reading an old manual about rebuilding a Saginaw pump, and uh, they, they recommended using uh, something called crocus cloth, which I, I've never heard of. Um, but I assume if you use something like Scotch-Brite, that would be another idea. Um, but you just wanna make sure there's no paint chunks in here, because when you're fitting this back onto the vacuum pump, a paint chunk would, would prevent it from sealing all the way, uh, and then you'd end up putting too much force on it, bolting it down, and you could break it. So, um, you know, take the time to, to clean this piece off right here. Now we're supposed to fit the power steering pump to the vacuum pump, 
And hopefully you guys can see in here, um, you know, you've got this, uh, this plus ring. So our job is to try to line up the, the dogs on the power steering pump with the dogs in there. And I messed with this before, before I had um, replaced the seals and it just takes a little bit of jiggling. It's really not a big deal. Uh, and I kind of wonder if I have to replace the power steering pump again, um, if I would take the vacuum pump off. The only danger is if you don't take this seal off right here that we just installed. You see that there? Um, you don't want to screw that seal up. So if this vacuum pump is sitting deep in the truck and it's awkward to get to, and you just go jamming the power steering pump in there and catch that seal and rip it, uh, you've got a major oil leak and, and it's going to take a lot of time to fix it. Um, right now I'm going to say I, I'd almost give it a shot. Um, only time will tell. Uh, so you got to watch the seal and you got to make sure the dog's lined up and don't force anything. If it doesn't go in because it hits the seal, as long as you don't force it, you're going to be fine. If it doesn't go in because your, your dogs aren't lined up, don't force it, rotate it a bit and try again, you're going to be fine. So let's see how we do. So I'm through the seal there, and this is going to be like this, so this is going to be like this. So once you're through the seal and you're hitting the dogs, you can just rotate the gear because it's, it's loose, and hopefully hopefully we'll settle in there. So right now I didn't put any bolts in it but if you look here I'm, I'm tight. I'm not using bolts. I'm not using any bolts to tighten things up here. It goes all the way in all by itself. And you see, you know, I probably went overboard. I didn't really have to clean as much of this shaft or as this dust seal or dust boot. But you see here, if you had any junk there, that junk is gonna keep this from going in place. So now, We'll leave, it, we'll leave it this way. We should be able to start putting our studs in. And the other thing, keep in mind the way your, um, your vacuum pump comes out, two of these flanges are longer, two of these are shorter, and the power steering pump is designed to fit a certain way. So if you're rushing, you know, you could mess that up and, and that would be bad. But um, I do want to put a little anti-seize on these, on these studs. When I'm putting anti-seize on a bolt, I try to put the anti-seize on everything first and then fit them because Anti-seize gets messy real quick. So this way I only have to mess with it once, hopefully. All right. So we bring our housing back up. Everything looks right. 
Now on this side, the two, the two top bolts don't have anything in them. So they just go in. And I did that wrong. I did that wrong. When you're looking at your studs, the short side of the stud is actually what goes into the power steering pump. So I did a beautiful job putting anti-seize on the part that the bolts go on. which is gonna be all kinds of messy when I start grabbing these. I suppose I should put the disclaimer, you know, this is the way I'm doing it. Um, use anti-seize, use torque, do whatever you, you know, this video is for entertainment only. Um, proceed it with caution, use your own judgment. I am by no means a professional at this. Um, so let's see if we can do this right this time. If you take a look here, you see how the housing is much thicker down here than it is up here. So the stud is sticking out less here than it is up here. So now we can put our top two bolts on and the one farthest from the block on the bottom because they just go on and get tightened. The one on the bottom away from the block is gonna have a wire loom. I believe it's the ground from the negative terminal, but it's gonna have a wire loom on it as well. And when I took these bolts off, I thought one of them was kind of rubbing and maybe it was just rust or something, but um, they all seem to be doing all right as far as tightening with, uh, with no problems. Wow. So I need a 15 deep. I don't think that's gonna happen. Or that. You know? I wonder what, uh, I wonder what that torque feels like. that. So we can't get to that with a deep. A shallow is not going to make it either once I put the ratchet on. So this is why they build intermediate sockets. Yeah. Okay. 
I mean, it's like I want to make it tight enough, but I don't want to crack it. That's why I use a torque wrench. It's not that I want things to be super tight. It's that I don't want to overdo it. Probably get the torque wrench on this one though, which I'm sure it's already over torqued. So we torqued that one. Torque that one and, and we just can't. I wonder. Can't get on to that one. Could I use a half inch torque wrench? That's not really going to work. Uh, yeah, we're not going to get that on either. So that's, that's how tight that is. That feels pretty close. So when we mount this on the truck, We're gonna have a wire loom that goes right here. And then it's got this lock nut to hold that on. Which I guess I'll just have to remember. So earlier today I uh, hit this bracket with the brass, the brass wheel and um, gave it a quick coat of uh, black paint. Um, and you can actually see the number. There's some numbers on it. I tried to get a picture of for the part number for this bracket. There's some very faint numbers here, very small. Um, but if you guys remember when we took this off, um, I said the bracket was going underneath the power steering pump. The picture in the directions shows the bracket going this way. And I don't know if it's just because my truck is a very late model that they had changed the design. But what they want us to do is put this bracket on just hand tight. So once we get her back in the truck, when we get her back in the truck, we can then just push the bracket over. Seeing that? Push the bracket over and line it up and get that sucker mounted up there. And this bolt looks awfully small to go through that hole. But that is the bolt. So this is the bolt that goes in the block. This is all that there is to hold that to the block. As long as we're here, we might as well see if our new power steering line is, is gonna fit. So this is my gates my gates line, and the line comes with, um, with a couple O-rings there. So when we do this for real, I believe we're supposed to put an O-ring right in front of this fitting right here, in front of this bump. But for now, we're just gonna see if the threads match up. And I'll tell you, this, this thing has been coiled up for so long, there's a lot of, 
there's a lot of um, tension in the line. I should almost unwrap them and bring them in the house and let them soften up and straighten out before I try installing them. But the threads are good. And it looks like the size of that is gonna be, it's not a, it wouldn't make it the same size as everything else, no. Looks like it's a 16. So we have two choices as far as putting this guy back on the truck. Um, we can line it up, you know, where it needs to be, which I think was something like that, and tighten it down before we reinstall it, which would be perfectly fine. Or the other option is, um, you know, after I fought with this so much, is I picked up this Sunex 10-piece metric crow's foot, 3 8 inch drive, uh, and that was a 16, so. These crow's foots seem like they were designed basically for exactly what I'm trying to do here. So with this guy, um, what I can do is, is get it on and then I would be reaching from the top. Now this is a flare nut wrench, so I kind of screwed that one up. So if you look at this crow's foot, it's got these two little projections. It's not like a regular wrench. How do we do this? So a regular wrench grabs the bolt on the sides, and I'd swear some of them actually have a V and they grab the bolt on the back too. The flare nut wrench grabs the bolt on all but one side, so it's got both sides, the back, and these little nubs grip around the front to give you a really tight grasp of your, of your bolt or your nut. And that makes sure that this wrench doesn't slip off. So when this guy is deep in the truck and I'm going nuts trying to get it loose or tight, what I'll end up doing is if I was coming from the top, see the wrench is going towards the top, you have to come over the fitting, get on, make sure your wrench is actually in the tighten direction, and you see as you tighten your wrench, you're tightening that bolt, and then you can just take it off, reset the wrench, put it back on, so we become, and then do a little bit more. Looks like I'd want to reset the wrench kind of like this. Oh, you're kidding me. <laughs> so you reset the wrench, put it back on, and then you can tighten. But I don't want to go super tight now. I don't want to screw anything up. And then when I was trying to loosen it and killing myself, same idea. You can just reach down there, but you can't slide onto a bolt. With a crow's foot, you can't slide onto the bolt or the fitting. You have to come from the top. But this puppy is going absolutely nowhere once you get it on there. And that is pretty cool. So that is uh, Sunex 9710M for metric. Real nice set. And just to make sure I had the right wrench, I also got Sunex 9708. Real nice set as well. And I swear these things were under 30 bucks a set. Uh, and they don't seem like, you know, cheap junk. They seem like good wrenches to me. Uh, and they're nice and thick. I'm sure there are situations where a thick wrench like that is not good. But if you're reaching in trying to loosen a power steering pump, 
So this is my regular wrench, and this is my Sunic wrench, Sunex uh, crow's foot, nice and thick. I'm really coming around on the Sunex stuff. Um, I used to shy away from more inexpensive tools because I figured if it's cheap, it's got to be a cheap tool, but I'm learning that, you know, you can buy decent tools uh, at a decent price with our friend Amazon. Okay, so is that loose? That's loose. So we got the right fitting, and that was a 16, was it a 16 millimeter? When the time comes, and I just gotta remember, you gotta remember to put the O-ring on there before you install it. I wonder if there's an idiot, idiot note on here. Looks good to me. I don't really know what a good power steering hose looks like, but it looks like it'll work. Forgot to put that cap back on. So there we go, guys. We got, uh, we got our vacuum pump rebuilt. We got our power steering pump, our remanufactured power steering pump back on. Everything's clean and good to go. The only thing I need to do before I start putting stuff back in the truck is I want to get under the hood and clean up some of the power steering fluid that I spilled all over the place. And then I, I almost think I should do some of the lines before I put the pump in. Let me think about that, whether I want to do the power steering lines before or after. I, I think I want to do them before because that way I, I have more room to work under there. There's one fitting on the steering box that's kind of tight too. But, um, you know, we're making progress, guys, and I, I guess sometimes that is all you can do. So we'll see you soon. Take care.